Welcome back to Guarding Your Digital Reputation. I'm David Makura, and today we're going to discover how your digital reputation is formed. In the last lesson, we discussed the importance of your reputation, and we talked about the basics of digital marketing. Today, I'm going to start by giving you a little more insight into how much digital marketing is integrated into your daily life. You're going to be shocked. Where it's headed in the future, and how it affects our digital reputation today. Imagine this, I need to go get some groceries. So I hop in my car and I drive down to the local big box store. Now, a big box store, of course you know, is one of those stores that has everything, right? Groceries, boating accessories, electronics, everything inside of it. And so I, as I'm walking into the big box store, I see a, a sign posted that says, warning, surveillance cameras in use here. And I do what I always do, which is completely ignore it and walk on into the store. And as I walk into the stores, the cameras that used to be used for kept catching shoplifters is now leveraging a facial recognition software that locks onto my face. And even though they don't know who I am, they begin tracking all of my movements throughout the store. Every aisle that I walk down, every product that I touch, when I stop in front of a product and I don't purchase it, I don't put it into my basket, it looks at it. And so it's mapping me the way I go up and down the aisles, everything about it. So I get all my grocery shopping done and on my way to the checkout counter, I go by the electronics department and on the end cap is a display of iPad cases and I need an iPad case. And so I stop, I turn, I pick up an iPad case, I look at it, I ponder for a while, and then I decide, you know, I really can't afford this this week. Maybe if they go on sale in the next couple weeks, I'll come up back and get one. And so I put it back and I head up to the checkout. Now up to this point, they don't know who I am. They just know that it's me. I mean, that's, it's this guy, bald headed guy walking through the store. So they don't know who I am. So they check out all my items, and as, I, as it comes to the time to pay, I pull out my card, my debit or my credit card, or I, or I pay by check. And as soon as that card goes into the, uh, the machine, that magic magnetic strip that has all of my data and information on it is now married up with my activity, and all of that activity that I did inside of the store is now tied to my name inside of their organization. It's, it's building my profile. And so I head out to the car, and while I'm heading out to the car, the computers are crunching super fast. Uh, all of the items that I didn't purchase, but I showed an interest in. So I, I get all my groceries into the car, I get in the car, start driving down the road, and about halfway home, I get an email from this big box store, and guess what? Everything on that email is specifically around what I was interested in, but I didn't purchase. And front and center on that email, you guessed it, it's the iPad case. And an offer for a percentage off and free shipping if I buy it right now. So I look at it, I think that, man, this is great timing. I was just looking at that iPad case. It's on sale. I'm going to click on it, and I purchase it. Digital marketing just worked again. You may think this is science fiction, but it's not. It's possible today. This is all done to help drive what we, we in the industry call personalization. And personalization is really designed to help make things more comfortable for the consumer. Why, why have you searching and shopping around, to every, searching through everything to find what you want, when if we can figure out what you want and we know what you want, we can serve that up front and center for you. Now there's a vital piece to deliver real personalization, and that is data. We need data. The industry needs data. We need to know everything about you who you are, what you like, what you dislike, the music you listen to, what you read, when you're home, when you're away, how fast you drive your car. They need all of this data and they want so much more. Now this may feel like an invasion of privacy, 
But the truth is that we're giving them all this information as quick as they can receive it. You see, in the past, it used to be very difficult to get information from people. I mean, you remember the days when you'd be out and about and someone would walk up to you with a, with a clipboard in hand and they'd ask you to take a survey? Or there was a car, boat, motorcycle, four-wheeler that you could win if you just answered a few simple questions? Most of the time, when you saw those people coming, you just turned and went the other way, or you ignored them completely. And so they got a very few people who actually engaged with them and gave them that information. But today, technology has changed the game. It has made da data gathering so much easier that we're actually lining up to give them all the information that they need without hesitation. Now you might be saying, how do we do that? Everything's being, being tracked. Everything's collecting data. So think about the games that you play, the online games, the apps, the consoles that your kids are using inside of the house. All of that is being tracked. Everything within it's being tracked. And then there's the big one, social media. Social media is the big one because we, in social media, we will give so much information, it's, it's just crazy. Think about this. How many quizzes have you answered? Right? They want to know who's your movie star twin. Or you want to know that. Or I, I want to know what, is, what princess am I? Right? <laughs> What's my personality type? And so I'll sit down and answer 10, 15, 20, 100 questions about myself so that they can go through and say, oh, your movie star twin is Bruce Willis, of course. So quizzes is a big part of, of data gathering inside of social media. But then just our profile in general. In our profile, we're telling, them, telling everything that we can about ourselves. And you might say, well, I don't do all that, but you do. So we're, we're telling them things like how old we are, important dates, music that we like, our, what are our favorite books, what do we watch, what, what, where are the places that we've been or the places that we want to go? How about our favorite activities? And the list could go on and on and on and on. And we're doing that not only in the profile, but throughout the, uh, the postings that, we do, that we're doing online. We're also exposing them to all of our friends. So it's not, it's not just information about me, but it's information about my 2,500 closest friends that I have on Facebook today. And then lastly, inside of social media, we're giving them a minute-by-minute -minute narrative of our life. The food that we eat, the places that we go, the people that we see, yeah, all this information were, were, is being collected and being put into the social media realm for, for them to leverage and to use. And there's nothing wrong with it. We get a huge benefit out of it because we get, to, we get to see what's going on with our friends. We get to see what's going on with our family in ways that we could have never done it 20 years ago. And then also, smartphones. You see, I'm old enough to remember the bag phone. I bet you don't remember the bag phone. Or the brick phone. It was about this big, and we put it up next to, it's like that right there. Right? Big, giant phone. Flip phones. But now we have smartphones. And the smartphones track everything that we do. It became a law several years ago that every phone had to have a GPS tracker inside of it. And now that GPS tracker is used in things like mapping. Have you ever wondered how any of these mapping programs can tell that in the middle of nowhere there's a traffic jam? It's because it's watching the GPS signals of all the phones, and if the phone slows down below the speed limit inside of a section of town, even if it's out in the middle of nowhere, and there's enough phones that slow down, then they, then they can surmise that there is a traffic jam way out on this two-lane road in the middle of absolute nowhere and alert everybody to it. Additionally, pictures, they can tell what rooms of the house that you're in. It can tell what type of, uh, how much screen time that you've got that you're actually leveraging different solutions. Your smartphones are a wealth of information. Shopping online, 
Smartwatches. I have a watch right here. It tells you my heartbeat, checks my heartbeat on a regular basis, tells me how far I walk. All that's data, data, data. And then home automation products. And they, these have really made life convenient because we have Alexa and Google and the portal uh, and so many more that all we have to do is speak and whatever we speak, they're going to do for us. So, you know, Alexa, turn on the light. Alexa, turn off the light. Alexa, turn on the radio. Alexa, open the garage. Uh, but in order for it to be able to act, it has to be listening all the time. This is also the case on our phones with Hey Siri and Hey Google, right? They're listening to, they have to be listening to everything to be able to hear their name. And again, that's more data. All of this data is an absolute gold mine. And it forms part of your digital reputation. You know, it's interesting. The, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 6 and 17 that we're supposed to come out from them and be separate, says the Lord. We have to live in this world, but we don't have to be of this world. As Christians, our lives should reflect God and how we act and how we speak. But I'm going to take that one step further because everyone would agree with me on that, that acting and speaking, definitely we should be reflective of God, right? But I, should, I would also say when we type. So when we take these hands and these fingers and we begin to speak through them into the digital world, that should be reflective of God. I don't tell you all of this to scare you or to tell you not to be participating in any of the digital things that we're talking about. It's actually the opposite. We do live in this world. But you can be alert and aware of what you're doing and be careful that you're doing things the right way, that you're portraying the right image. It's all about knowledge. Knowledge is power. And the more that you know, the more that you understand, the greater witness that you're going to be able to be for the Lord. 2 Timothy 2 and 15 asks us to do your best to present yourself to God as one approved. A worker who does not need to be ashamed. We shouldn't be ashamed. And who correctly handles the word of truth. Remember in Lesson 1, that scripture in Ecclesiastes that talked about a moment of folly can destroy a lifetime of good works. That's what we have to be careful of. That we work so hard in our, in our Christian walk and we work so hard in, in being the person that God wants us to be that one tweet, one post, one like, one share doesn't tear it all down and destroy it. Let's recap what we discussed today. We talked about digital marketing and how advanced it has become. The need for data and how that contributes to your digital reputation. Some of the different sources that the data is actually collected from. And how important this is to God and our ability to be a witness for Him. So what's going to happen now? Your class facilitator is going to lead you in a discussion about what we've covered today. This is your opportunity to express your thoughts and ask questions. Take advantage of it. In our next lesson, we're going to look at the impact that your digital reputation can have on your life today and in the future. See you next lesson.